So we're talking about Delta Lakes with schema on read versus schema on write. And basically this is a fundamental decision you make on how you're gonna organize your data in a big data environment so that you have some common understanding between producers and consumers how you're gonna store your data. And so how you can implement uh, security and compliance rules. So for this discussion, I'm really gonna talk about record data in the lake. Data that's record oriented, typically relatively flat, although it could be hierarchical in a row, so it's going to be square because I talked about data lakes for squares in another talk. And uh, so it's stored in blob storage, which is storage where you basically fetch an entire file. So we're going to manage the way that storage works out for that. And then it's going to be tabular data and we're going to treat the blob storage as a table store. And that means every time we append new data to a table, we're going to generate more files, right? Because in a typical blob store, you can't do an update. You can't do an append on a given file. And so we're going to assume it's a table and the table is made up of partitions so that we can split partitions across compute nodes and that those partitions will each be made up of multiple files and it's record format here. So in this picture, I've got two files out of many being shown. They each have four data, three real data columns and an event date. So four data columns and a primary key, and we can have an arbitrary number of those. When I say scheme on read and scheme on write, why would I want different schemas? So this is kind of what we do with views too in a relational database is we may have different consumers with different needs. So some may need an enrichment or a set of codes that looks one way and some may need an enrichment or a set of codes that looks another way. Although for those, because storage is super cheap in the cloud, you could just add all the columns that everybody needs in all the formats and you'd be good to go but we may not do that. Another one is we may filter columns in the data set based on attributes. So there's four data columns in here and two of them had sensitivity. And so there might actually, in this case, be three different pools of users, some four different pools of users, users that can see no sensitive data, users that can see sensitive field one users that can see sensitive field two and users that can see everything. So the question is, how do we create either views or other copies of the data? Or how do we make this work where we see different versions of the data based on who we are or based on the business case? Media files are out of scope. I'm not going to talk about documents. I'm not going to talk about hierarchical. Like I said, record, record oriented data, right? And I'm not going to talk about ETL, like how you convert data or any of that, or how the enrichment works or how consumer prep is done. Consumer data prep for consumers is done. So let's start with schema on read. How do we easily filter attributes when a file is fetched in its entirety? So there are really two ways, schema on read, schema on write. They each have subcategories. For schema on read, we're gonna leverage the unlimited computer of the cloud to transform the data in transit. So basically what we do is we also build some view propagation or permissions filtering tier. You load the data up and then it is actually filtered, data is removed from it uh, as it's propagated up to a given set of users. So in this case here, I have an example where we have the same data set we had on the previous page. And this user is allowed to see sensitive data field one, but not sensitive field two. So as this data is retrieved from the bucket through some kind of proxy or view propagation tier, and this could be a SaaS product too. So you could have a cloud-based database built on top of blob storage. Those are really view propagation tiers, right? Um, they're not, they're not tr like a true, well, they're a database, but it's really an abstraction on top of blob store. If we're going to take, so that was scheme on read. And I got a whole nother talk where we talk about the different ways that the proxy filtering tier can be implemented and why I call it that, even though other people may call it different names. I'll put a link somewhere for that. How do we easily fill the attributes when it's fetching this entirely? What's the other way? We did talk about scheme on read with the view propagation tier. Now we're going to talk about scheme on write. And this is basically... For schema on write, this is called schema on write because we're going to know what format the users are going to need or what the permissiveness of the different data types are. And we're going to store it in a way that we can actually use the cloud storage access controls instead of like in the view propagation read on schema on read version, we actually build different access controls and stuff in this proxy tier. So in this case, we're going to write the data down knowing what the users need, what the consumers need. So I'm going to give you an example here. In this case, uh, I'm actually going to create three data sets. I'll create the primary raw data set with the four data columns in them. And then I'm going to make two extra copies of this 
one for each of the two classes of users. What I'm assuming here is I've got two user pools, one that can see sensitive field one, but not two, and a user, uh, user pool that can do the reverse. It can see inverse. It can see sensitive field two, and it can't see sensitive field one. So in this case, when we import data to the lake, we would somehow make a transform on it and convert it into two, uh, two into three different formats. It would convert the original into two others. So another way to do this is kind of take the previous one and we don't really know what all the users are going to be like, oh, this one needs these three columns and these two, and this one needs these five columns and those three. And so we would build all that out. Another way to do this is through columnar groupings based on data sensitivity. Because if I'm not worried about permissioning to it, like sensitivity of the data and the risk, then a bunch of those columns can probably all be brought back every time. So in this case, what I did is we wrote the original data out in the raw format and maybe didn't give everybody permission to that. And then we created a data insensitive table and then two data sensitivity tables. And each of those could be multi-column too, based on how many sensitive fields we had. Um, this might be like uh, personal information, personally identifying information, that kind of thing. So in this case, we wrote down the original data set, a table in partitions, in files, and then we wrote three other tables with multiple partitions and files so that all lined up with the original table in their orientation. You could also put these in the same table with different nomenclature, and then you would write a custom library against this so that it would know that, oh, this table with these five columns, and it was really these three different file sets, and it would know how to sync those back up. The only other thing I, I may not have pointed out on the previous slide is we're gonna make sure we have some kind of primary identifier in all these columnar groupings, because that way when we query, we can guarantee that those all get joined back because we know the order may not be the same, right? Um, so the one part here is you got to make sure they all end up in the same partitions together. But if you can handle that and you can do the join part, then this way you can use cloud only controls, no other filtering, no other access um, authorization technique, because you can give the right people access to each of these files, but then it's the consumer's job to assemble it all back together. So the last version I think I'm really going to talk about here is schema on write column per file or file per column. I'll redo this slide. So this notion is that each column is in its own file and the consumer just picks up the columns they want to run in the query and assemble those into a row. So if I've got a million rows, I'll actually in this case have four million rows stored, a million rows for each of the four files or each of the four views, and then we'll assemble those together. And the beauty of this one is we can totally mix and match permissions on a per column basis. And this is, act, and then, but it's on the consumer library's job to make, assemble all that back together to make the table look like it does at the top of this. One of the things I wanna point out about this is, this is kind of a really weird approach if you haven't ever done this before. But what we're doing, we're shaking off our relational database mentality or notion and we're and what we're doing is we're like hey we have a completely blank slate on how this could work if we had no assumptions but we have this restriction that the entire file is fetched or it's not and that we want to use the cloud providers controls then what would we do in that case it may be that the more cloud native solution is to actually do schema on write and that could be where you have um individual schemas you know, one schema for each consumer type. It could be where you have columnar groupings and you arrange permissions on those and each consumer group gets a couple of the columnar groupings. Or you could do it in a way where you do a column per file and just blow the whole thing out there and then use unlimited compute to put all that back together. So that's pretty much it for this. Wanted to keep it under 10 minutes. I hope this works for you guys. Schema on read versus schema on write.